What's up guys? We are back with another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles review, taking a look at, let's say, one of the most anticipated TMNT releases in a very, very long time. We are taking a look at the first of the Super 7 Ultimates line of turtles, and we are, of course, starting it off with Raphael. It's a turtles line. This is the only turtle in Wave 1. So I figured we had to do this. So I cannot really tell you how excited I am for this line. I say it a lot when I talk turtles. A lot of the stuff that I remember when I think of turtles is always that vintage toy line because, well, I just played with them so, so much and they were always around when I was a kid. And I had so many of them and I continue to have so many of them. So the vintage line has a lot of nostalgia for me and that's exactly what this line is doing. So we've got new modern style figures that play off those crazy wild Playmate sculpts. So as far as packaging goes, we are very much in the collector realm with these, very much in line with the other ultimate figures that I've taken a look at recently from Super 7. So like Conan, Toxie, Voltron, things like that. So uh, keeping in line with the old Masters of the Universe Classics tradition, we do get a mailer box. So we've got a brown box with the Turtles logo, and then we've got Raph's name there. Nothing else to really speak of on it. And then you can uh, pop this guy open on the side. And within we have got just some fantastic, fantastic packaging. And I kind of uh, gushed over some of the other Ultimate packages previously, but these things are pretty wild because not only do I really like this slip cover design, this sort of almost full slip cover design, it just looks really good. So we've got a unique slip cover for each figure in this wave. So. Uh, Raph is a turtle, so he gets a turtle manhole cover design there. And then you've got kind of an ooze almost motif with the turtles logo on the back. Now you can pop the slip cover off and we get the actual figure and its actual packaging within. And the presentation on this is really top notch, frankly. So you've got a nice kind of uh, brickwork design all the way around it. Figure in the humongous window, so you can kind of see all of his accessories in there. Logo down on the bottom, some graffiti artwork uh, down the side. So given a, a very, you know, animated uh, style of the uh, city streets, the same with the old packaging on the Playmates cards. And on the back, you've got more artwork for that kind of grimy uh, city design with a little bit of a bio for Raph. So, yeah, this is the kind of packaging that you don't want to throw away, really, because the presentation on, on it is really fantastic, and you can take it out and put it back in. It's really easy to be uh, resealed like you never took it out. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our TMNT Ultimates Raphael. And before we get started, uh, I do need to mention that this figure was provided by Super 7 for the purposes of review, but that makes me no less excited for this guy because... This is definitely one of my most anticipated lines for the entire year. It's right up there with Thundercats for me. So Thundercats is my all-time favorite property. And TMNT is, I mean, it's either tied or it's just below on any given day. They are the end-all be-all, really, when it comes to childhood properties for me. They even outrank Motu. So uh, this is a really exciting line because I've said it a number of times when it comes to Turtles. The vintage toys are what I think of a lot when it comes to turtle stuff. You know, tell me a character name and more often than not, their vintage counterpart is going to pop into my head because we played with them so, so much. So the idea of getting an updated version is something that we've never gotten before. You know, we've got Toon Turtles, we've got Movie Turtles, we've got Video Game Turtles. Uh, we've got all sorts of different turtles, but we've never seen anything quite like this before. And I think it's a pretty cool idea. So uh, let's get started and see what this guy can do. See how he moves around. He is Motu Classics ish. And I don't want to stress on that too much because it's that same kind of base format, but this guy is so different from anything we've ever seen in a Motu Classics figure. Not to mention the fact that they have changed up the articulation scheme, uh, sort of, visually speaking, anyway, for the better. So uh, let's take a look, see what he can do. So he looks up really, really good. So you can get him into some sort of like diving poses or, uh, you know, jumping in the air. He does not really look down all that much, though. The bottom of the chin kind of hits the neck right away. So you get a little bit but not a great deal a little bit of tilt actually more than a little bit that's really good and then you've got full rotation there the arms of course go out at the shoulders and they go actually higher than 90 degrees it's a little tight but i don't feel like it's going to break or anything or certainly certainly no worry there we've got rotation at the shoulder as well you do have your bicep swivel they're just single jointed elbows so this is one of those motu classics things but the takeaway from that is there are no pins on this figure. Uh, so that's the that's the key change. When I, when I say they are Motu Classics-ish, they are, 
but they don't have pins, which I really, really like, because at this point, that's like the one thing that has been the eyesore in the line for a long time, so I'm really happy that that's not present any longer. And they also uh, do rotate at that elbow. The hands out of the package, they, ro they actually have a hinge, a vertical hinge at the wrist, and then you've got rotation. Both of these hands are vertical hinges. And then we've got some little interesting bits inside of the shell. So I don't know exactly what it is. I'm assuming it's a double wall peg possibly of some kind, but there is a little bit of wiggle inside there, uh, inside the shell, and it's mostly evident at the waist, or what would be a waist on a non-turtle, so a human. Uh, you've got this kind of wiggle back and forth. And it's not floppy. I mean, he doesn't move or anything, but it's it's a little bit of give there. So you can push him forward and backward. And there is surprisingly a decent amount of twist in there. Like that's more than I was expecting. So he does move uh, within that shell, which is honestly really good. So you can tilt side to side and then rotate. And it it seems like it wants to be a little loose when you feel, you feel around in there and you kind of play with it, but it's not. And it's actually quite sturdy. It, it sits just fine. I've had no problems posing him. Uh, it's just an odd kind of feel to it, if that makes any sense. You've got legs that go out all the way. So you can get him to do the full splits as well. They go forward all the way. They go backwards a little bit. You do have the shell to contend with there. You do have your thigh cut. It's a There's a ball joint there, and then, of course, the thigh cut uh, covers that. We've got our single rotating knee, which, again, is very Motu Classics-ish, but, again, no pins. And then you've got really good rocker down there and really good hinges at those ankles. I mean, they go very, very far forward and backward. So, really... There's not a whole lot for me to complain about. I really know what I'm getting into when it comes to the Super 7 Ultimates figure. They are, again, kind of based off the framework of a Motu Classics. They kind of all go together, which I still really like. It makes me feel like that line never died. But, um, you know, they do have the lack of pins, which I really, really like. And he does move really well. Everything's very fluid. Granted, you know, I would like to see double-jointed elbows. I'd like to see double-jointed knees. But at the same time... It's all very aesthetically pleasing and seamless, and I really like it the way it is. Now, when it comes to the aesthetics, there is obviously one key thing, one big goal in mind when it comes to this figure, and then, of course, the line in general. They are trying to mimic, slash recreate, slash improve upon that vintage Playmates look, feel, style, while giving it this sort of modernized shape and form. And frankly, at first glance, I'd say they absolutely nailed it. I really don't have... As far as the visuals go, I really don't have anything to gripe about. I really like the way this figure looks. Uh, as soon as I got him, I, Im I immediately started tearing him out, and uh, I was just kind of taken aback. My wife actually took a video of me not knowing that, that I was opening these, and it was like watching a kid at Christmas, honestly, because this thing is a very exciting Visually speaking, very exciting figure. I think it looks exactly like what I envisioned my toys being when I was a kid, if that makes any sense. So when I was a kid playing with the vintage figure, this is what you imagine. Something that's far more mobile, some, something that's bigger, something that's uh, a lot more detailed than what we actually got. Granted, Playmates vintage figures were incredibly detailed for the time, uh, but I think you know what I mean. Uh, this guy looks fantastic. I really dig all of the shading all over the body. There isn't too, too much. It's not heavy-handed or anything like that. Uh, it's just enough in the musculature to bring it out. So he's got like a little bit on the tops of the hands. Basically anywhere that you've got like a, uh, you know, muscle striation or very big musculature on the, on the arms or down in the legs, there's a little bit of kind of like a smoky black shading. And it really accentuates the green on this figure because of course this is Raph, so he is that slightly lighter shade of green. Uh, he's not like bright Bright, bright green, but he's also not the darker muted colors that the other turtles are, because, you know, they had that kind of varying color scheme when it came to the vintage figures. The, uh, the shell, the inner shell, I guess the undershell, is a little bit of a softer material, which makes sense. You know, it helps you to move a little bit. It's not anything to note. It's just softer, really. There is a lot of detail on the shell back there. You've got the cuts on him as is the case for Raph. You've also got the storage for whatever that triangular weapon he has is called. And then, of course, he has his uh, initial emblazoned on his belt buckle. He does come like this out of the box, where he has a pair of Psy inside his uh, really, really big uh, sheaths on his on his chest, which I really like. It's a very vintage thing. Like, that's telltale vintage Raphael right there. And I think that's what this figure just sort of screams. It screams that version of this turtle that we all played with. Well, 
if you're my age, that we all played with as a kid, just kind of done up in a larger scale with more detail, with more mobility, and it looks fantastic. And a lot of that, of course, comes down to the head sculpt because this is very much uh, that vintage look when it comes to Raph with the gritting teeth with both sides of the mouth showing, and you've got the green in between the teeth, not to mention the very uh, triangular uh, mask eyes there, with have, which have no pupils, which I always love when it comes to just about anything. And then you've got that kind of darker red uh, bandana with the little tie on the back. So, I mean, if they're going for a vintage looking modern style figure, I would say mission accomplished pretty handily. Now, when it comes to the accessories, that's an area where the Ultimates idea for this line really comes into play because they are trying to give us just about everything you can think of for, for the given character, so you're not going to have to get a separate version down the road that has this or that or something that you missed or that they could have included. It's all kind of here in one package. So uh, to start with, you have got the extra head sculpt. So we've got one that's a little bit angrier, and this one definitely kind of screams Raphael. So he certainly looks a little bit pissed off here. You've got him gritting his teeth. The mouth is fully exposed this time around. Around. There is a little bit more of that shading on the kind of turtle nose area that he has there. Uh, it's not too bad and it's still not very heavy handed, but it's slightly darker than the actual vintage head sculpt. You've got a little bit of a furrowed brow there and you've got more of that bandana showing as it's kind of blowing in the wind. So this is definitely going to be more of your action style head, which I uh, really do like. Then we've got, again, we've got the size that come on him out of the package. And these are a little bit different. So he actually has three different sets. So you've got a set which is just molded silver plastic with the black uh, hand grips there with the straps on them. You've got a set which are metallic silver with the black. And I should note, these are kind of rubbery, but they're not too bad. Like, they're a little floppy, but they hold their shape just fine. And they did not come out of the package warped for me. Uh, just FYI, I'm not so sure about that. I've heard a few reports of that, but I don't know. The, uh, the ones that come on him in the box are pretty sturdy. They are... They, they are seemingly a little bit different material than these. They seem to bend a little bit more, but they are also relatively fine. They retain their shape just uh, just fine for me. We've got two uh, shurikens, two ninja stars here, done up with silver plastic. And then we've got the aforementioned triangle weapon. I don't know what this thing is. Silver paint with uh, some brown. And then you can, of course, uh, throw that in the back on uh, on the shell. I love the idea of weapon storage. Wherever, wherever I can get it, I will take it. We've got whatever this is. Again, I don't know. I'm not a ninja, so I'm not really sure. So silver with more of that brown. And then you've got uh, this thing. This is very, very classic turtles. This one did come out a little warped, but it uh, seems to be just fine. So it's uh, it's got that curved blade and the straight blade. I mean, this is the stuff that I remember being in the box, being on those sprues. And speaking of, we do get that. And I think this is the most ridiculous thing here, uh, honestly, because it's just one of those over-the-top accessories that do you need it? No, but it's also really funny and it is kind of a nostalgia trip to go back and get something like this in the box. So it's done up with no paint. It's that classic kind of uh, orangey brown color that we had uh, back in the Playmates days. And all of the accessories I just talked about are all uh, represented on the rack here. So this thing's pretty wild. It's definitely a, a blast from the past when it comes to turtle stuff. But he does come with a few other things as well. So out of the box, he does come with the vertically hinged hands like I mentioned. He does have a set of horizontally hinged hands also. So you've got a set of gripping hands uh, like this, and then you've also got another set that is a slightly more open grip. So some of the handles on these weapons are a little bit larger, so you do have hands that can accommodate all of the weaponry, and then they even can accommodate the throwing star because this is a more tightly closed uh, grip, so you can kind of pop them in like this or something and then get them in that finger almost. So do like that. And then you've also got this one here, which is uh, my favorite hand style for Raph, so you can do the old uh, sigh through the fingers kind of thing. But this is also going to be a hand that you can likely use for your slice of pizza, which is really, really well done. It's got a nice shiny finish on it, so it makes it look like it's kind of oozing, uh, covered in grease. And then you've got some turtle comms. So we've got one that is closed, 
and this is black with some uh, red paint on it. And then you've got the open one, which has all of that same design, but then you've got the innards of it. So you've got the screen and all the buttons and the control panel. So he does come really well decked out. I'm not really sure off the top of my head if I think I'm missing anything as far as a vintage Playmate style turtle goes. He just has a lot of stuff, tons of weaponry. And then of course you've got the big nostalgia trip with the weapons rack thing here. Uh, I'm never gonna take these off, but I'm certainly not gonna fault him for including it because again, it's a blast from the past. It's something that kind of rounds out the whole vintage Playmates feel of the entire package. And to quote Pixel Dan, we do have to do some comparison time. So I figured I would take a kind of greatest hits approach to all the standard RAF figures that kind of go along with the vintage look and era of Turtles. So we've got the NECA Mirage, we've got the NECA Movie, We've got Super 7 Ultimates, we've got his original Playmates Vintage counterpart, which is missing a sigh, and I need to inquire with a certain three-year-old as to where that went. We've got our uh, Bandai Tamashii Nations figure arts. We've got the first wave of NECA cartoon turtles over here, and then we've got Wave 2, which is, of course, just a repaint. So... There is very little to truly compare to here, I think. I know there's a lot of folks out there t saying who's the favorite, which one's the best, and frankly, that's not what this is about for me. These are all very unique interpretations, and they are all very, very different versions of the same thing. Comic version, movie version, toy version, uh, the very specific style guide type of turtles, the original cartoon appearance, and then the original cartoon appearance done up in style guide colors. So they are all different. They don't really compare to one another unless you want to talk about scale, and for the most part, they're all very similar. Uh, the Mirage is a little bit shorter. The movie is, of course, a little bit larger, but then the Super 7 is very much similar-ish to figure arts and NECA as far as tune, but he's a little bit taller. So there is a lot to take in as far as the overall look and appearances, but at the end of the day, they're all very unique interpretations of the exact same character from roughly the same era of Turtles. But I'm sure folks want to know how this guy stacks up to other lines that aren't Turtles. So we've got a handful of things to take a look at real quick. So we've got some other Super 7 offerings. We've got the ever-present laughing uh, Prince Adam. And then we've got the recent Ultimates Toxie. So you can see that for, you know, an actual Ultimates figure and then the same scale with the Prince Adam that you've got at least about an inch difference from the norm when it comes to Super 7 stuff uh, to the Turtles. And then let's see, uh, you know, some non non-turtle stuff. We've got a Black Series uh, Stormtrooper here, and let's see, the SH Figure Arts uh, Goku. So you can see Raph sizes up pretty well to those. Uh, as far as height goes, he's a little bit beefier than these figures. Then we've got maybe some actual turtles, but from NECA. So the uh, Toon Casey and a Toon Foot Soldier, to give me an idea of how he stacks up there. I think that looks pretty good, actually. I really like the way those uh, go together. Casey looks really nice with the, with a vintage Playmate-style turtle. I'm down for that. And then we've got the NECA Alpha Predator to give you something that's a little bit bigger, so that guy's quite a bit larger. And then a, let's do a Mezco, so the Baron Ben's uh, 112th Collective figure. So you can get an idea of what he looks like next to a smattering of other lines, turtle or non-turtle. So yeah, I'm really happy with the way this figure turned out. Granted, I do already have a huge fondness for the vintage line when it comes to the aesthetics, and just the fact that it takes me back to being a kid. You know, I can't ever replace that with these figures, but this guy is a really fantastic modern interpretation of the toys that frankly consumed my childhood for a very long time. So I was already very much excited for this, but to get these in hand, it really changes things because they're just so much fun. Again, I have not been able to put Raphael down since I got him out of the box. It's been one of those things where I don't want to stop playing with him. I want to keep messing around, keep using those accessories, keep posing him, keep playing around with other figures and seeing how he stacks up to other lines. There is a lot to like about this figure from an aesthetic standpoint. Uh, he does move pretty well. I would still like maybe to see a little bit more range in those elbows at some point, but the figure does move nicely. The pinless body is really well done. It looks very seamless and just 
just visually pleasing. And then again, he comes with a million accessories. There's so much stuff here. Uh, take it or leave it when it comes to that uh, vintage weapons rack sprue system, but I think it's a funny inclusion and it's one of those just kind of wacky Super 7 accessories and I'm down for that kind of stuff. So yeah, this is a really cool start to what is hopefully going to be a very extensive line. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 TMNT Ultimates Raphael. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time. Thank you.